You're watching Musical Theatre Mash. Should I listen to now hear this? Now, now, not the past or the future. Here, here, exactly where you are. This, whatever it is you're doing. Sounds pretty zen, doesn't it? I mean, how do you make a musical out of that? Well, I'll tell you. I wonder what else is hiding out there that no one has discovered yet. I wonder if there are stars with expectations that haven't been met. I wonder if the sun gets tired of burning and what magic fuel is making it thrive. I wonder how long we'll just keep on turning and I wonder if Angelian is still alive. Now here this is almost a song cycle. There's a bit of a plot and a bit not of a plot, but 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 that doesn't matter because in the words of Hunter Bell, this show fucking rocks. Like literally, like they're rock songs. I mean kind of. The, it, the musical also stays pretty close to its musical theater roots, which I kind of like. I know what you're going to ask. So, what is this musical like? It's like when you were seven in the middle of the winter when your mom pulls all of the towels out of the dryer and throws them on the bed and you crawl up under them and feel that warmth from everywhere. It's like that candy that your grandma always had that you kind of sort of like and kind of sort of don't like but you eat it anyway because it's candy and it's your grandma. It's like that first time you watched the Golden Girls finale and you felt kind of sad, but you felt kind of happy, and you felt like you were kind of probably really into guys. It's a show about a concept, and you just don't come across that very often. Well, what's the show about? It's about nothing. <laughs> Where title of show was silly, unexpected humor. We could get that woman who was on emptiness. Sign a man off. She's awesome. Yeah. Now here this is calculated and clever to the core. Take Jeff's Dazzle Camouflage. Dazzle Camouflage. In World War I, the military used to paint battleships with wild eye-catching patterns. This dazzle camouflage confused the enemy's rangefinders, so huge boats could hide in plain sight and bomber planes would just pass them by. Sometimes the best way to hide is in plain sight. Roxy Hart does it in Chicago, so nobody knows that she's a murderer. Razzle dazzle Jeff did it at the Suncoast Middle School's annual PTA Pancake Supper, so nobody knows he's gay. It's a song about something you've always known, but you've never been quite able to articulate it. A light bulb goes off. If I could dazzle everyone around me, I could hide in plain sight. Then maybe I would hear Shane Fessler say, Dude, you're funny. Instead of, Dude, you're a faggot. You're just blasted back and forth between these deep, melancholy sentiments and jokes about testicles. You know what moose knuckle is, don't you? And that's just the third track. Heidi's Give Me Your Attention. Give me your attention, please. And Susan's I Rarely Schedule Nothing. 5.30 a.m. the ringy dingy starts singing. Are equally as equal. I, I mean, they make you feel things that you know you felt before, but you've never felt that you've felt them. I defy anybody to get past track seven without finding something to relate to. One of the CD's centerpiece songs, That'll Never Be Me, squarely addresses the anti-now-hear-this sentiment. The idea of if only. If only I were luckier, if only I were wealthier, if only I could have her life, I'd be happy, but that'll never be me. We 
casually and routinely shut ourselves down and stop short, filling our lives with excuses and hopes of if only. There's a beautiful movie star on the cover of a magazine. She started life with a silver spoon and now she's on the silver screen. I wonder what it must be like living on cloud nine. But the closest that I'll get to that is turning through these pages in the checkout line. But don't worry, this is musical theater and your 180 turnaround train out of Yonkers is on its way. How did they do it? With my favorite song. Golden Palace. Way up high, out of reach from you and me, sits a golden palace. I have no map, I have no key. The Golden Palace is located just over the horizon. You can't see it, but it's up there in a high up, out of reach, top of the world place. Oh, this song, oh, uh, this song, it, yeah. First off, you should know that Susan Blackwell has been my spirit animal ever since she started licking people's faces on Broadway.com. It could be like a, mm -hmm. no, it's happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come here. I knew this was going to happen. Mm. I just wanted to give you that. That's actually, that was actually mm. a lot nicer than I thought it was going to be. When I saw you do it to other people, I thought your tongue looked like it might be a cat's tongue. Don't, don't. If you are an artist, no, no, no. If you have ever wanted to be an artist, ever, you must listen to this song. Seriously. It is empowering. It is enlightening. It, 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 it makes me cry like Rose, Blanche, and Sophia when Dorothy moves away. I don't want to give away too much of the song and ruin your fun, so spot up five Pandora tunes that shizzle and, and get on it. Now. I If you have ever been a weirdo or a nerd or an outcast, if you have ever wanted to make art and felt like you couldn't, you need to listen to this musical. Do it! Do it now! Get to the chopper! 